What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Gather round, and I will tell you the tale of a man of science. Welcome to another Way of the Swan Battle Report, and this time I'm playing Nemo 3, everyone's favorite white-haired inventor. Today I'm matched up against Legion once again with Vale 2. Uh, common anti-signar drop, because she can kill your caster super dead with her dumb feet. But... Nemo is prepared and has brought many storm lances to kill all of the scary dragon monsters. This is a pretty cool Nemo list I've been playing around with and I like it a lot. Um, it has some rangers in there to buff all of the accuracy of all the storm lances and dynamo. And the whole idea is that I get a big, huge feet turn and kill everything with my feet so I don't really have to deal with things uh, in the late game. But I have Ragman in there as well so that the storm lances can go kill um, stuff with their pointy sticks if they need to. Uh, but, like I said before, I'm playing against Veil 2 with Veil 2 things, many heavies on the table, uh, Seraph, Scythian, Typhon, and a Ravagor, as well as two lights. And as you can see, the scenario is Outlast. So we have those two zones in the center, wonderful patriotic zones, and uh, players can dominate them to score two points or control them to score one. No kill box in play, which is a big deal for Mr. Nemo because he's easy to kill. Um, and Vale's really good at killing Warcasters. But with no kill box, he can hide in the back and cower, and hopefully he doesn't die. But we have Vale going here first. Um, as you can see, everything's moving up quite quickly up the table. We have the Hellmouths taking position on the uh, hill there. The Ravagor launched an AoE out to uh, try to stop things from hiding behind that wall too easily. But unfortunately, the deviation didn't go great. Uh, and then everything else just moving up a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of heavy war beasts on the table for Legion today, which is, I think, pr pretty good for Nemo, although Typhon is a bit of a problem. Typhon's in there. Uh, he's going to be effectively armor 20 with excessive healing, which is pretty significant. So hopefully uh, all these lightning guns will be able to take him out. First up on my side, I have the Firefly going in to try to kill some tentacles with its little lightning generator gun. But between Impervious Flesh um, and not rolling say 6 on 1d6, I need to kill them. Uh, they end up surviving, unfortunately. Uh, you can see the rangers in the top corner there, hiding behind the forest. Um, they're going to be instrumental in being able to hit stuff like uh, Typhon, especially in defense 13. It makes it tough to, um, to get hits on him. Um, reliably but also uh with, with um like dynamo he goes up to rat eight so shooting with rerolls at the heavy war beasts means it's very uh likely that he'll hit all of his attacks and get the most use out of uh, his chain reaction that he can so everything's mostly just running up this turn i have electrify on the bottom unit of storm lances there uh, arcane shield on the top larger unit next to the forest there go the rangers running up, and I put Dynamo pretty far forward. The lights are hiding behind the wall, but Dynamo's all the way up there because he ain't afraid. Uh, with magnetic field on Nemo, um, none of my dudes can be uh, can be pulled by the Hellmouths. Well, the Hellmouths are a little far away right now, but um, later on that'll come into play. And uh, Vale can obviously chase in that off, but she needs to get an arc node over there, and she needs to be pretty far forward to do that. And she doesn't really want to do that with all these lightning on the table. That can just uh, bounce electroleaps into her and kill her. So we're back over to the Legion turn. And Dynamo being so far up there, um, he really poses a threat because uh, with Nemo's feet, he can one round a heavy with his gun very, very easily. Uh, potentially even cripple two heavies if they sit next to each other. Um, so my opponent really wants to take him out. I think the plan this turn was to... Uh, was to hit him with a couple spells, see how it goes with Veil, um, hit him with some spells off of that tentacle on the hill there in the center, and then come in with the guns. There's the bolt thrower um, that's uh, just next to the Scythian on the closer zone to the camera. So that can walk up and take a shot as well, although it's not going to push him because of the magnetic field. Uh, plus the Ravagor shot, plus um, if things went well, Typhon could move up and take his shots as well. So uh, my opponent sort of scoping out the territory right now and trying to take some shots. Here goes the Ravagor, and I believe that he doesn't roll particularly well and misses the attack, uh, and it deviates off, and uh, boosted damage, I think, does a couple points to Dynamo, um, but not really and not really what my opponent was looking for. So I think he ends up scooping on that plan and doesn't end up uh, going after Dynamo with all of the attacks. 
So Dynamo's going to survive this turn and get a turn of shooting into the Legion army, potentially with uh, Nemo's feet just getting tons of damage out. So Dynamo and the Storm Lances both have pretty effective guns. Obviously the Firefly's in there as well, so we can increase their power by two. Um, but uh, Lattermore's in there, so those Storm Lance guns are going to be base POW 14 when they're in Lattermore's command range. And then with Nemo's feet, it's all uh, uh, additional die damage, so essentially boosted damage rolls. So they can shoot pretty hard, potentially power 16 shots off those Storm Lances. Uh, and you can basically get the uh, effect of a charge with the Storm Lances. Uh, there's the bolt thrower going in and sniping himself, so there's no Wraithbane there. He doesn't end up killing that uh, Storm Lance, but he does push him back a little bit farther away. Um, so anyway, those Storm Lances get almost the same damage output as a charge uh, on Nemo's feet turn. So they can almost get two turns of charging, one turn with that long 19-inch threat range if they do end up assaulting. Um, looks like, I think the Deathstalker killed a Ranger? Or killed... I think it, it finished off the Storm Lance that the Bolt Thrower had shot. That's what happened. So I'm down one Storm Lance so far this turn. The Scythians moving back behind the wall there to survive the Storm Lance attacks. Those Storm Lances will probably have to go into that Hellmouth there, try to clear it out. Uh, with Impervious Flesh makes things pretty difficult, but um, hopefully they can get in there. Uh, and then Typhon moving back outside of Dynamo's massive threat range. So one of the things I like about this list um, is that Dynamo is a huge threat and he can play very far forward and my opponent either has to kill him or just basically lose a heavy to his gun and Nemo's feet. And so that's what we're trying to do. So this turn, uh, my opponent didn't do as much damage as he was hoping, I think, to my army. So I'm going to get to have a big feat turn. Um, Dynamo is going to die next turn if I don't use him right now. So he's going to move up and he's going to take out that Ravagor, I think. He's not going to have the Firefly bonus, but with Nemo's feet, I don't think he needs it. And there's Nemo going. Nemo goes in feats, kills an, a unit of the Hellmouth Tentacles with his Lightning Generator gun with the additional die uh, for damage there. Good stuff. And then um, putting everything in range to uh to take some more sh hits i'm not sure what i was attacking with there um but it looked like it did something anyway uh, <laughs> uh here come the rangers running up one of them's running on that hill i believe that hellmouth tentacle is out of command so it's not gonna be able to make a free strike so that ranger can get right in there and get its uh, mark target bonus on both the ravagor and the bolt thrower so what i'm going to try to do this turn is take out both the ravagor and that bolt thrower and if my dice like me and get through Impervious Flesh, I can kill that lower um, uh, Hellmouth and be able to score on the bottom zone for to take a point. So here's Dynamo going in. He rolls tons of dice, so many attacks, rips that Ravagor right off the table. Awesome stuff. Um, he was rat 8 with the Ranger bonus, needs anything but double 1s uh, to hit, and then Nemo with his bond gives him a reroll. And uh, so he's very accurate. Um, and does exactly what I need him to. There's Thorn running up into the zone, so he's going to be able to cap that zone if I'm able to clear it. But the big thing is that he is also uh, going to block my Stormlance charges. So you can see the uh, proxy bases out there, and the Stormlances want to assault, but they don't want to get too close and make things too easy for the Legion model. So he's going to be able to um, to get up in the way and stop my Stormlances from going too far forward just so they can make their assault shots. So we have two Stormlances going into the Hellmouth, and they actually... Get the dice they need to kill it. Um, dice minus four with only two dice is not great odds to kill it, but it's still possible. And they do get some damage into the Scythian as well with Electro Loops. And then one gets in on the Bolt Thrower and does some significant damage as well. And I think the uh, shots in the Bolt Thrower are leap into the Seraph, so we get even more damage on the Seraph. And that's one of the strengths of Nemo's feet is that all of those little ancillary damage rolls are also get also get that additional die. So you're able to do a ton of damage with Electro Leaps and Lightning Generator and stuff like that. So here's the other unit of Storm Lances going, and I think I get one or two shooting at the Bolt Thrower. Uh, we already had um, we already had Catherine Lattimore shoot into it, and then it looks like two Storm Lances are able to take it out. So that is the Bolt Thrower, one Hellmouth, and the Ravagor dead on one turn, but my army had to come pretty far forward in order to do that. So hopefully I'm going to be able to... Uh, I, uh, I can survive this turn, but I think I'm going to lose a lot of stuff. And that's... I Probably one of Nemo's biggest problems because all of the lightning guns in Signar are very short range, so he's going to have to move very far forward in order to make those attacks. Uh, so hopefully his his Alpha Strike basically has to be crippling, otherwise it's going to be pretty bad the next turn. 
But with stuff like Stormlances on the table with Assault, he can um, he can get lots of threat range out and uh, hopefully make that Alpha Strike as devastating as possible. And I think we saw a pretty good Alpha Strike this turn. Um, so now my opponent uh, definitely has Dynamo in range. I'm probably going to lose Dynamo to Typhon. But Magnetic Field is stopping Dynamo from being pulled in by the Helmoth uh, that's over there, even though it is in range to um, be able to do that. And what that does is it stops my opponent from being able to kill Dynamo while keeping Typhon safe. Typhon's going to have to come forward and deal with Dynamo in melee by himself. Um, and that's another strength of Nemo, I think. He stops uh, his models from being isolated and taken out um, independently. So we have uh, we have the Seraph Apparate up there. Um, I think uh, Veil went up and slipstreamed and did a Boundless Charge onto Typhon to get him in range of Dynamo to take him out. Um... And then we have the Scythian. Oh, I think this is a feat turn, actually. So I think I think this was a feat. Veil vale, uh, arced off the Seraph, I believe, and uh, and took some shots into Thorn and those Stormlances over there with spells. This game was played a while ago, so I'm a little hazy on the details. My memory, just like Nemo's, I'm sure, is not the best. But we have the Seraph going in, attacking Thorn, and I believe the Seraph does end up crippling Thorn, but doesn't kill him. I'm not, I'm sorry, not the Seraph, the Scythian. So the Scythian is going to be that green base in the, the um, bottom zone there, um, attacking Thorn and those Storm Lances. He doesn't roll great on the Storm Lances, um, but leaves Thorn with, I think, with only his shield left, I believe. Basically, almost kills him entirely. The Seraph's moving in to flare uh, Dynamo, make sure that Typhon can take him out, uh, and he also flares Thorn. Oh, so I think the Scythian has, actually hasn't gone in yet. That's just the proxy base of where the Scythian's going to go. Um, so the Seraph uh, flares Thorn and Dynamo, uh, knocks their defense down so that the, uh, he the other heavies can get work done over there, and also does some damage to one of those blue Storm Lances. What a dick. Um... So my, my opponent actually makes a mistake here and uh, tries to pull Dynamo in with the Helmoth Tentacle, but I have to remind him that uh, can't do that. There's uh, some magnetic field going on. So the Helmoth, the Tentacle ends up staying there and just does a couple points of damage to Dynamo. But here comes Typhon, comes in with his big bitey mouth and bites up all over my dude. So it's a spray going down first. Dynamo's defense 10 with the, um, with the debuff there. Um, and positions to get the best spray possible, and uh, ends up doing significant damage with the spray, I believe. And then... Um, I believe we get a pitch. Yes, there it is. So there's a pitch off Typhon into Dynamo, throws him into a Stormlands, and wipes him off the table. So Dynamo is dead, but the uh, Stormlands is knocked down as well. So uh, that Stormlands isn't going to be able to do a ton and um, and otherwise, Typhon is in grave danger. So he, without being able to drag Dynamo into the um, into range of Typhon, Typhon has to come forward, and that means uh, now that uh, Ragman and the Firefly can get work um, going on in there, they can get their damage buffs out, and the remaining Stormlances hopefully can mop this game up. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So we have uh, the Scythian finally going in there. Takes one Stormlance out. Cripples Thorn uh, significantly. Pretty easy with the... There's another Stormlance taken out. So there's only one left in that unit. Um, but with the Flare from the Seraph is able to do that pretty easily. But we're back over to my turn. And like I said, um, the Ragman's in there basically for this reason. I think uh, my opponent has to come forward to deal with all these Stormlances and the guns that Nemo brings. Uh, and, and that's when the damage buffs start getting going. And hopefully the remaining Stormlances can can uh, do what they do and wipe out the rest of my opponent. But we'll see how it goes. So with uh, impact attacks as well as assault, Stormlances get a lot of attacks out. So uh, damage buffs like Ragman actually... Um, sort of multiply effectiveness uh, because there's so many attacks. So they get uh, the, the minus two armor works for the impact attack as well as the, the gunshot from assault. And that's a pretty powerful gunshot if you factor in Catherine Lenormore as well as the firefly. So you get a, up to a power 18 gunshot and then um, 
the power, uh, it'll be a power 17 melee attack. So you can take a heavy out pretty easily with two or three storm lances if you get all of the buffs in place. And that does require quite a uh, working, uh, a lot of moving parts into that machine to build those storm lances up into the monsters that they are. But if you're forcing your opponent to come into you like um, like I did with, uh, with my long threat ranges and powerful alpha strike, then... Um, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. So Thorn went in there. I think he still had a Cortex left, even though his spear was broken. So he was able to do a couple points of damage with Deathfield on the Scythian uh, and get the work started, but not a lot. Although, actually, I think he uh, <laughs> he did roll pretty well. He's pretty angry about having his uh, his arm ripped off. So uh, he did roll pretty well and did a couple damage to the Scythian. So hopefully, um, here comes one Storm Lance. I don't think the Firefly's in range on the Scythian right now, so his gunshot's not going to be as powerful, but Ragman's there, uh, and he does a significant amount of damage. Um, so combined with the damage that he took from Electro Leaps earlier, as well as Thorn, uh, Thorn's attacks, that one Storm Lance is able to finish out that Scythian. So that's one heavy down, and then here comes everybody coming in on uh, Typhon. So we have... Um, the Firefly bonus in there, obviously. Ragman's death fielding one of those storm lances, so the, the Typhon's minus two armor uh, is transferred over, and there he goes down as well. So that is crippling to the Legion army. There's basically only a Seraph and Veil left on the table. The uh, Veil's still good at assassinating, so Nemo's gonna he gets Arcane Shield from um, the Journeyman Warcaster and runs behind that house. So he drops Magnetic Field off and. Um, hid behind the house camping for focus. And that's one of the things that Nemo can do. Um, he's mainly just a walking feat. His gun's pretty good, his spells are okay, but he doesn't, uh, with Finch he can allocate focus very efficiently. And uh, so he doesn't end up spending a lot of focus. So he, he can um, he can really camp quite a bit. And with armor 16, that makes things pretty easy. Now this was actually really hilarious. My, my Rangers walked up and they started taking shots at the Seraph. I had one Ranger there from last turn that survived on the hill, so I was getting marked target on the Seraph. And they just decided to roll a, a couple 11s and 12s and just take the Seraph off the board. Now, it had taken a lot of damage from Electro Leaps and Lightning Generator earlier from the Bolt Thrower, but they still rolled ridiculous and took the Seraph out. Um, I don't know, I don't think that, that is going to change the outcome of the game, uh, but it is very fortuitous for those Rangers. Bill just goes out, um, wipes some uh, the rangers off the table. We take some attacks, try to kill those rangers in vengeance for the Seraph. Uh, but at the end of that turn, um, we call the game. I think uh, I was up a pretty significant amount of scenario. I, I was up at three points at that point. Um, and it was basically just Veil and a Hellmouth left. So, a mighty Signar victory. Um well, that's one of the strengths of Nemo 3, is that he can go in and deal a ton of damage with that awesome feat, um, and then hopefully he can uh, he can uh, sort of close the game out from there. Now, my opponent did have some bad red dice rolls, and I had a couple good ones, especially killing that Hellmouth in the bottom zone was a big deal. Uh, with that Hellmouth still alive, uh, it would have been impossible for me to, to take that zone, and I probably would have lost a couple Storm Lances basically for free. My opponent wouldn't have to, uh, to move for quite as far forward to, to take those guys out. But um, anyway, it was a good game, and I wanted to show you guys this cool Nemo 3 list in action. I do talk about it on the Storm Chamber. If you guys haven't checked that out, it's on the Muse on Minis Network. It's a sweet podcast, uh, and we talked about Nemo 3 on the last episode. So go check that out if you have the time and or inclination. Otherwise, thanks for watching this super cool battle report. If you like my battle reports, please consider hitting the like or subscribe buttons and go on to patreon.com slash way of the swan to help me out making these videos with a donation if you are so inclined. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.